Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and boy, we got a hot topic today. Today, I want to talk about Duns and Dragons, and I want to talk about Gareth Michael Skarka's Far West. Holy cow. Uh, so, let's talk about this. So, basically, the reason I want to talk about um, Gareth Michael Skarka's Far West tabletop role-playing game is... Um, I want to talk about it in context of Dungeons & Dragons. Dungeons & Dragons catches so much heat, so much complaint, so much just uh, flair, right? Um, and it's just unwarranted. Like, they, Hasbro has had immense success with Dungeons & Dragons. And if you go on Twitter, if you go right here on YouTube, you will feel so, you will find so many fools telling Hasbro how they should run D&D. With these outra outrageously ridiculous, just ridiculous takes, right? And the reality is, this is like, it, it really, if, and the reason, and why I keep talking, I just try to defend Hasbro D&D, because it seems to have no defenders, right? You just, you listen anywhere, like, you know, um, Professor Dungeon Master, or, ben, or actually um, Bob World Builder, uh, the character sheet on comic.com. There's just so much fire coming at, at Hasbro. And, and what, and the, the, my read on this is it's like, it's like going to a local basketball court, right? And in, in 1997, right? And, uh, Michael Jordan's shown up for a neighborhood basketball game and listening to somebody who can't sink a layup telling him how to play basketball you know it's all these osrs and indies and indie supporters and osr supporters talk so much heat on Dungeons and dragons and then we get gareth michael skarka's far west tabletop role-playing game and this is why Dungeons and dragons is the quality standard for the tabletop role-playing game activity sphere 100 percent right the quality is not just in the writing and the layout, right, and the art of every Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition product, but it's in the delivery. Like, there is a drumbeat delivery. And sometimes, and I I dared to complain about the logjam that we got at the end of 2023. I, like, I think we got one or two products at the beginning of the year. And then, like, just August, Big B's, right? Uh, August, Big Beast Presents Glory of the Giants. And then September, Fandelver, um, Fandelver and Below, Fandelver and Below, Fand Fandelver, Below, and the Shattered Obelisk. Uh, and that was in September. October, Planescape, Adventures in the Multiverse. Um, November, uh, we're looking at, um, the deck of many things, right? Four products in a row. And I was like, darn you, has Rover log damn it up at the end of the year, right? So the dun so the sphere of the sphere of tabletop role-playing games is three three select segments. Duns and Dragons, right? OSR and Indy, right? OSR had a huge delivery this year. It was Kelsey Dion's Shadow Dark, right? That's the best thing they produced this year. And it proved a lot. It proved they want, it proved OSR. Not everybody in OSR is dedicated to exclusionary prejudice, right? Like, hey, there's some people who aren't aren't dedicated to exclusionary prejudice who really uh, you want a tabletop for more reasons than just to exclude specific races in their game. There's actually people who love inclusion and like are celebrating joy, right? Like, it was, just, it was incredible, right? So Kelsey Dion came in and really slammed it down with Shadow Dark RPG. And, and produced over a million dollar Kickstarter. That's impressive, right? And uh, but the indie, holy cows! The indie has the biggest badge of shame for the year by far. So let's talk about Gareth Michael Skarka's Far West. All right. So first of all, I'm kind of proud of myself on this one, man. I've been doing this a long time, right? Like, so I've been on I've been on YouTube for nine years talking about Dungeons and Dragons, and I'm I'm approaching six thousand videos on my channel. You just heard it. Six thousand videos on my channel. I, you know, you could you could chalk up two, three channels and they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't even approach the numbers on my content, right? Like, I've talked a lot about Dungeons & Dragons and I'm very aware of what happens in the tabletop role-playing game space, right? 
so get this. So I was very excited um, literally 12 years ago about a game called Far West. Now, what is Far West? It is a famous tabletop role-playing game that just delivered its core rulebook this week. I was on um, uh, Drive Through RPG, and I go over to. Why do I go over to Drive Through RPG to see the haps, baby? To see what's dropping, right? And not Dungeons and Dragons content. Like I, you know, every other tabletop role playing game that's releasing um, is. You know, I wanted to see. Um, I, I go over there to see what's coming, right? Like, and and the reason why I go over there is like, is there a, is there a threat? Is there a contender? Is there anything from the OSR? And the um, and the indie that can t- contend and is coming for the space of Dungeons and Dragons. So twelve years ago, I was extremely excited about me and many others were extremely excited about this game, Far West. Right. So this thing comes out. So they they announced this, and it's Western Wushu. Okay. So it's Western. Yeah, you got it. Gunslingers. At, you know, gu- you know. Uh, pistols at dawn, right? Like pistol, uh, pistols at high noon, right? We're gonna walk outside the saloon. We go shoot each other in the face. One of us is gonna die, right? Like you know, just classic western, American western, 1880s. You know, like six guns and you know, double six guns and horses and all the cool stuff of westerns, right? Mixed with wushu, which is um, wire kung fu. Right, like a kung fu movie where they use wires and people are jumping fifty feet and doing backflips and all, you know. And so, Western wushu, that is dope. That is a super dope concept, right? So, so twelve years ago, Gareth Michael Skarka comes in and says, "Hey, everybody, Western wushu as a tabletop role playing game, and I'm kickstarting it as an indie tabletop role playing game, right?" And everybody's like, "Bet, man, we are excited, Gareth Michael Skarka." Give it to us. Here's my money. 17, 717 people gave Gareth Michael uh, Skarka a total of $49,000, right? And said, make it. We're ready. Do it. Give it to me, right? Shut up. Here's my money, right? Like, right? Three years go by. Nothing, right? People are like, hey, uh, Gareth Michael Skarka, where's that game? Like, we all pledged it. What's happening? And he's like, oh, blah, 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 excuse, 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 right? Then three more years go by, and everybody's like, Gareth Michael Skarka didn't deliver. This was not cool, man. And Far West became famous as the most, like, late delivery, actually, the most no delivery, most excited about. It was the biggest mixture of, I'm excited, people are excited, people want it. People are excited to see what this person is going to create. They're like, this game is going to change things. <coughs> this will really be, you know, this will definitely be the best Western Wushu tabletop role-playing game ever made. And back in the day, people were like, oh, this could compete with Dungeons and Dragons. Now we know that nothing really competes with Dungeons and Dragons because there are no Gary, there are no Gary Gygaxes in the OSR and in the Indies, right? And we keep, and actually, we get close every now and then. Uh, D. Michael uh, D. Vincent Baker, uh, the the person who created um, uh, PBTA, and actually it was Apocalypse World, and and actually Sage Latour really brought forward Dungeon World and really changed the game with PBTA. And then John Harper came in, right? And so there are times where the indie is like, oh my gosh, you might be looking at another Gary Gygax, some some real innovation, something real here. But Gareth Michael Skarka had people excited. People were like, yes, right now. Gareth Michael Skarka has delivered the his indie tabletop role playing game twelve years after it kickstarted. Twelve years after it kickstarted. Twelve years after it kickstarted. That is astounding. What does it mean? It this is why I stay on Dungeons and Dragons. The OSR does not deliver. Indie does not deliver. And now what we really know is the metrics of how bad it is. If you are a a Dungeons & Dragons, Hasbro Dungeons & Dragons fan, you might get stuck with the problem I have. Oh my gosh, I have four products in four months, right? If you're on the OSR side, right, 
you're going to get, you're probably going to get your stuff three years after it was announced, and then you're going to get it, and you're going to be like, is this literally all black and white? Is this literally made with the same layout and the same writing quality that was we were hitting in the 80s and the 90s, and it took you three years to deliver it? Dungeons and Dragons is delivering products every three months in full color with amazing art, amazing writing, and amazing layout, but it takes three years for the OSR to deliver black and white nonsense? And the answer is yes. But we have a new king for suckitude, right? And that is the indies. The indies have set the bar for the worst, uh, in my opinion, for the worst circumstance you can get if you are looking for a tabletop role-playing game, right? So if, if you're on a D&D fan, you might have to wait the year out and have a problem of where you have too many products to buy, all that have amazing art, all that have amazing layout, all that have amazing writing, right? If you're if you're an OSR fan, you might have to wait three years for junk that looks like it was printed in 1980 and has no color in the art, right? But if you're indie, right, you might give your money, spend three years complaining about the author, then spend three years and say, that product is dead, right? And and be like somebody who's lost their spouse, right, in a river, right? And you're like, I have to just, you know, we have to bury this person, right? Because this is not, you know, we don't know where the body is. It's, it's just missing, right? But we've got to bury the person and all move on with our lives. And then your spouse shows up six years later and you're married, right? And you got two kids, right? This is terrible, right? And and what this says is, if you Kickstarter, you may wait over a decade for fulfillment. A decade if you are an indie tabletop role-playing game fan. That is a new level of cruelty from the tabletop role-playing game scene, right? So one, I want to apologize to every single one of you for having to hear me flap my complaint maw about getting too many products at the end of fall 2023. Thank you, Hasbro. Thank you, Wizards of Coast, for for outperforming the OSR in the India at a level that is staggering, right? And Gareth, in my humble opinion, Gareth Michael Skarka slams the gauntlet down, right, for the worst possible user experience in the three spheres of tabletop role-playing games. If you are if you are a Hasbro Dungeons and Dragons fan, welcome, baby. You're going to get treated like a king, treated like a queen. If you are an, uh, an OSR person, I applaud you for being that patient to wait for that little quality. If you are an indie person, an indie tabletop role playing game fan, I give you my greatest condolences. The fact that you could possibly wait 12 years for delivery when you had put up your money and given and and given kindness and tolerance and real belief and real trust to an indie creator and then they deliver 12 years after Kickstarter oh man you guys are in the worst position right and what's what's wild is the OSR is really stepping out as fully crushing the indie tabletop role playing game scene at this point in my humble opinion every single word of that is my humble opinion What's important is when I get to hear your humble opinion. When you get in the comments and send your traffic, please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.